In this video, we'll talk about the conditional specification. This is a very important topic to understand developmental biology. Conditional specification is the process by which cells achieve their respective fate by interacting with other cells in the vicinity. That means interaction matters. So here is a red cell in an embryo. What this red cell would eventually become is dependent on how it interacts with its neighbor. Moral of the story, neighbors matter. So question is, how does neighboring cells influence the fate specification of this particular cell? It turns out there are many ways of influencing the fate specification. One way of doing that is cell to cell contact. And this is known as justacrine signaling. There could be also secreted signals such as paracrine signaling factors that is interpreted by this red cell and that governs the fate specification. Now, apart from these modes, there could be also physical properties. There could be also mechanical stress, uh, rigidity of the extracellular environment that all can actually govern the fate specification. Now, this kind of conditional fate specification was nicely demonstrated in zebrafish embryo with an elegant transplantation experiment in early 1970s. So, look at the control situation. This control uh, embryo would eventually give rise to a particular uh, zebrafish larvae. Now, any cell which is present in the dorsal part, that means in this blue region, would eventually become cells of the back. And that's pretty much expected. And any cells that are present in the yellow region would eventually become the cells of the belly or the lower region, ventral region. Now, scientists have created a transplantation experiment where they have taken a cell from the back and put it in the belly region. And then they ask, what happens to these cells in the belly region? Do they retain a fate of back cells or they eventually become belly cells? And the answer is they eventually become belly-like tissue. That means they no longer retain the fate that they were originally supposed to give rise to. And the cells of the belly region influenced the fate of these transplanted cells. That means how cell interacts with its neighbors is really important for its fate choice. And this experiment proves that. Another way of proving that is ablating a selective region of the embryo. So using glass needle, some of the cells were removed from a blastula and eventually it was noticed that it didn't affect the embryonic development. The larvae actually matures normally. That tells us that if cells are removed from the embryo, the remaining cell can regulate and compensate for that missing part. It again tells us that how cells are interacting with one another matters for the cell fate specification. Now, it was not really accepted by the scientific community that this kind of conditional specification can occur because they had a deep-rooted idea of autonomous specification in their mind. In fact, there was a scientist who tried to prove that autonomous specification is the key thing and conditional specification doesn't occur. So let's see what experiment he has done. So he has taken uh, frog eggs. At a two cell stage, he used a hot needle, needle to ablate one cell of this two cell stage. Eventually, this two cell stage embryo give rise to a blastula whose half tissue were dead and half tissue were living. And ultimately it give rise to half of the embryo. So this kind of experiment tells us or actually depicts that, okay, the information of one half of the embryo was embedded in one half of that two cell stage cells. But this idea was actually challenged by another elegant experiment. This experiment was done by Wilhelm Rocks and also Wiseman. Another experiment was done by their colleagues. They have taken sea urchin eggs at a four cell stage uh, they have dissociated these cells. But before, let me tell you that this four cell stage eventually would give rise to uh, a pluteus larva of the sea urchin. 
Now these four cell stage can be uh, dissociated with the help of vigorous shaking. And each of these blastomeres can be separated. And they ask what happens if we separate the blastomeres? What type of cells do they give rise to? To their surprise, they noticed each of these blastomeres give rise to an entire pluteus larva. And this result was very surprising. Let me tell you why it is surprising. Let me refresh your idea about autonomous specification. Autonomous specification tells us that, okay, what the cell has to become is deeply encoded within the cell and the drives comes from inside. This red cell would eventually give rise to this kind of ciliated red cells and the red cell knows this, fr knows this from the beginning. Because if you take it out and put it in a isolation in a petri dish, it would eventually become the same type of cells. This was the idea about autonomous specification. Indeed, it was true for several organisms. But in case of this pluteus larva, if autonomous specification is true, then each of these blastomere would have the preloaded information to give rise to different location of the embryo. It's like one on one mapping of different parts of the embryo encoded by different cell types in this four cell stage. So based on these conceptualization, the expectation of the experiment was that, okay, when we dissociate these cells, each of these cells should give rise to different larval body parts if the information was preloaded and pre-encoded into these cells. But let me tell you, this was not the observation. The observation was very different from the expectation. Instead of giving rise to individual body parts, these dissociated cell gave rise to entire pluteus larva. This was the reality. So what really happened? So once the cells are actually in an intact embryo format, at that point of time, cells are talking to each other continuously. They are interacting with each other. And this kind of context give them an idea to become certain different cell populations in the entire, entire larva. Now, once the cells are dissociated, then the context would be lost. Now, let me tell you that in an intact situation, each of these blastomeres doesn't encode the information to become the entire larva because there is always a crosstalk happening between all of them. And that prevents each of the blastomere to become each complete embryo. And in an intact situation, each blastomeres are talking to another blastomere to become one particular larval part. So this talking to each other is really important context. And that context is lost when the cells are dissociated. And at that point of time, each of these blastomeres decide to give rise to the entire organism instead of a dedicated body part. That tells us that context and interaction within the cell types are really important for the fate specification. Now we know that in vertebrate situation and many other organisms use this kind of contextual or uh, context dependent specification or conditional specification. Let me give you another example. Let's say there are some cells which are specify, specified to become muscle. If you keep them in isolation, they would eventually become muscle. If you keep them some, if you keep some cells which are destined to become neuron, they would eventually become neuron. No harm in that. But if you put some cells which are about to become muscle in a near vicinity of several neurons, there are crosstalk between these cell types. Now the influence of neurons make these would-be muscle cells into a, another neuron. That means how these cells interact with the environment, interact with the neighbors are really important. Moral of the story, story is cell commitment is still liable. And during specification, external influences matter. And that's the whole concept of conditional specification. I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. You can find more notes and flashcards in my Facebook page and Instagram. Links are provided in the description. You can support our channel using super thanks. You can pay via Paytm, PayPal or UPI. See you in next video.